Chuck, welcome back. Okay, what do you reckon? I'm happy with that so far. That is the project on the tail pretty much finished. I've got the chain guard, the hugger, the under tray, and the panel itself where I want it for now. The only thing that's not 100% that I will be revisiting in the future is the symmetry of this tail. When I made this thing, I made it with clay and wire and eye. Really, that is as technical as it was. And there's no way that was ever going to be 100% perfect. What I made sure of, what I paid particular attention to, was getting the two axis of front and side to side absolutely correct. And I've done that, I've achieved that. That's this axis across that you're leaning on, so it feels straight when you sit on it. And obviously the straight front to rear axis, so you look along the top of the bike and it's dead straight. It doesn't actually sit cockeyed off to one side. All that is wonky, as some of you said, is the roundness in these cheeks, that's what's causing the problem. These cheeks on the side, this one on this side, is kind of a bit roundy, that's just a little bit kind of booty, and this side that's a bit more cape moss, so you know that's a bit flat and skinny, and I think that's the problem, it makes it look kind of like that, rather than nicely rounded. There is a way around it, I've had to think about it, what I might do in the future is take the thing off, go along to a 3D printing company, get it scanned in, and get it copied, mirror image, so take the rounded side, the rounder, curvier side, and literally they'll just copy that on screen, you know how that works, they put it into a computer and they make an absolutely perfect 3D image of it that's perfectly symmetrical in every way. Once that's done, they can print that, plastic print that off, 3D printing. Once it, That'll cost quite a bit, it's an expensive process. But once it's done, then I can use that as a plug and I can mold that from, oh my goodness, anything, carbon fiber, Kevlar, parachute silk, t-shirt material, anything I want, I can make that from and I'll have a plug and a proper mold. And if it really works and they're popular, then I could even make a few for people who might want them in the future. So there's lots and lots of future projects in this to come. There's not only that, there's the issue of possibly looking at the undersea exhaust side of it as well. That might come in the future. That might cause further redesign of this before I get there, because I'm gonna run bung an exhaust out this side of the tail, then that's gonna need more work done on it. So there's lots in the future. Like I said, this is about getting this on the road, ready for riding and MOT. Once it's done, then I can carry on with the little projects as time goes on. Which brings me to the last little bit of fabrication I've got to do on this bike before I start plugging everything together, and that is the front mud guard. The bodywork is almost done. Front mud guard's a bit too big. I did say that's it. I'm good, I'm happy with that, and walked away from it, but it's not. I want to just trim it up. So it's more in keeping with the general design. You saw that in the walk round. It is a little bit too big and heavy. I think you all would agree with that. So we're going to trim that today, and it might be one, maybe two videos. I want to get it done, get it into one piece, so it's a smaller, more proportional mud guard that fits in. Then, finally, I can start the big push to get it all locked up together and off to our MOT. Let's get on with the mud guard.
Well, I think that's about right. I'm not going to butcher that anymore. I think it looks a lot chunkier with the wheel and the forks and everything now. It's in keeping. When you add that other piece on, you can see how much longer it was. Made it look dangly and spindly. Now it looks chunky, beefy. I like that. Much happier. We are okay that's it lapped and flapped and into shape symmetrical front and rear everything's bang on all i need now to do is body work it i'm going to make those little edges absolutely smooth and round so that they're nice and grabbable without any issues no sharp edges and then i can get some paint over that body on the bike that's that one done quick time mind you how long this takes we'll see it's now quarter past 12. let's see if i can get it done by the end of the day
Just when you think you're finished, you're not finished. <laughs> one tiny little pinhole, one, just one. Otherwise, that is perfect and ready to paint. So I'm gonna fill my one pinhole, then get ready to paint it. Right, really, really super chuffed with that. I'm gonna leave the garage in the mess it's in. If you've ever done this kind of thing, you know that this is one of those times, don't clear up. Leave the dust exactly where it is because you start moving that dust around in order to clear it up. Even if you use a vac, the vac itself emits wind, it blows as the vacuum motor turns to suck up the material, then that's blowing air around inside the garage and everything is going to stick to that like a flypaper so while that is absolutely soaking wet gloss at the moment i'm just going to leave it there quick while i'm ahead very very much ahead gotta say a real celebration super stoked about that as some people say i really am because i didn't think that would come out as good as that the old silver finish was properly temporary i never intended it to be like that i knew i was going to trim it up something or do something more with it and even if i wasn't i'll come rebody work it later and i've done that on there now so that's it it's a chunky size it fits nicely now and that finish is perfect for what we're going to do in the future that will be a great base coat remember the fire paint that we did on the turbo bike that's exactly the same thing that's the base coat i used on that thick thick coats of it and then later on i can flat that back with 1200 paper get it super smooth and ultra flat ready for the artwork to go on top and then the clear coat six coats of clear over the top of that and that will be perfect so that really is just a base coat the same as everything else so same as the under tray i'll leave that there 48 hours to dry it and when i come back that will form the first part of the next video i'll bolt that on the bike and little stand back and have a look so sadly, because we can't finish the video the way I wanted to by bolting that on, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna take the under tray off, carefully moving around, carefully in my dusty environment. I'm gonna weigh it against those two big lumps of steel mudguard that I cut off and see if actually I've canceled out the weight of the under tray by means of cutting that down. That makes sense? 
Let's have a look again carefully. Right, let's see what the weight gain or loss is, if anything. Okay, under tray. Remember I weighed the hugger and it was grams. Didn't weigh much at all. This is a little bit more to it. So, half a kilo. Half a kilo for the under tray. Now that's against the two bits of metal that I cut off the mud guard. A quarter of a kilo off. So the bike today grew by a quarter of a kilo, <laughs> which is a really small amount. And I'm really happy with that. Sorry. So really happy with that. A quarter of a kilo overall gain with these other few bits, literally, I'm gonna add one kilo to the plus total. And that's for the, this, the hugger and the chain guard as well. So the three of them together, I'm gonna to call that a kilo and I'm gonna put that on the board as added weight to the bike in the chase for seeing whether at the end of this project, this is higher or lower than the original body weight of a ZX7 RP4, which is what this is. There it was. Okay, let's whack this back on. Let's update the board. There we are, that's it for that one. Thank you for watching, take it easy, ride safe. See you next time.